And Arisa gave an uh, ambitious talk. Uh, I am given totally unambitious talk. Uh, so I'm talking about the accuracy of those results, accuracy of hell abundance matching. Uh, we will talk about accuracy of simulations. Uh, and uh, of, I will cover the resolution which will change by number of particles by about one billion. So it will be billion particle simulations, will be 100 particle billion simulations. Uh, uh, I mean, 100 particle simulations. Uh, so now the question is uh, the accuracy of those hell abundance matching. Uh, and related with that, because it's all based on, uh, on this quantity, uh, is the accuracy of hell velocity function, which is a proxy of uh, velocity of rotation velocity, or velocity dispersion of stars and galaxies. And you can do it different ways, which is, should not actually depend on how far you go to luminosity to get your outer part. You actually, you can, you can define it different ways. Uh, with, uh, uh, with Sebastian, we did it at 10 kiloparsec. You don't need to go to hell curve a distance to find it. Uh, it will be the central part, but it's technically it's difficult. So now, how accurately we measure that quantity uh, uh, will be discussed a bit later. So this is, this is a bit of a propaganda. This is the next round of simulations, the big simulation suite which we come in uh, and do an analysis with. Uh, so those will be number of particles cubed. Uh, which is uh, uh, which is like 60 billion particles in each simulation. There's a whole banana of those. Uh, they cover different uh, cosmological parameters, which is different what we had before, from W7 to uh, uh, to W map uh, to uh, to Planck. Uh, uh, going down here, the mass of the particles also changed dramatically. Uh, so one simulation, or let's say, um, let's mention two simulations, which is important will be this one. Uh, which is uh, which is a Bolshoi for Planck simulation, which is a resolution of about 10 to the 8 in number of particles, uh, in the mass per particle. In the sense of uh, physics, we're going down to Mag Mag Magellanic clouds. Uh, the another simulation, which is actually will be important for what we do, uh, for hell abundance matching, uh, will be this one. Uh, uh, when we have a one gigaparsec box, so the statistics is tremendously much better. Uh, and lots of or let, less of uh, fluctuations on, on the large scales. We'll see later on that actually is quite important. Uh, uh, with that resolution, we got to uh, 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 M33 and above. So all galaxies uh, M33 and bigger will be resolved in one gigaparsec box. This one. Uh, so now uh, the accuracy question was uh, overdue, so to speak. And uh, to some degree, it was motivated by the first all this big suite of simulations. We need to know what is actually resolution of those simulations, how we interpret all these results. And the second one was, to some degree, was motivated by uh, going white paper. Uh, if you read it he uh, here, limits of uh, sub abundance matching. If you read it carefully, uh, correlation statistics on you know, scales from 200 kiloparsec to 2 megaparsec converge within 20 uh, 20% only for sub uh, with more than 1,000 particles uh, and so on. Uh, and actually, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's too optimistic. If you look at the results, we need to have an accuracy of about 5% to produce all these all this results which, uh, which Lisa was talking about. In this case, the resolution actually will be 3,000 particles. If we look inside what's happened, we need to throw out, if that would be true, what they're saying, we need to throw out most of our results. We have, a, we have two simulations. One is a baseline produce a true answer, so to speak. Okay. And they have a, a simulation which is, uh, has a, a much worse resolution. And you say, what convergence between one simulation and another one, how many particles you need to get that convergence? So in this case, the baseline is Millennium 2 simulation, which is a much smaller volume, but at the same time, much, be uh, much better resolution. Uh, uh, that will be uh, Millennium 2 simulation. Uh, and you compare it with Millennium 1, which is low resolution. Okay. So we plot it here. This will be Vmax, uh, 200 kilos per second, 3,000 kilos per second will be, will be here. Uh, and we do the ratio of number of objects, the satellites uh, and distinct halos. If you look at distinct halos, for example, the ratio, you know, at the 10% will be around here. This is your convergence. Okay, but then that accuracy, the number of, uh, number of halos, number of density of halos uh, in low resolution will be the same as in high resolution. For sub halos for sub halos the convergence will be here. And we need for that 30 particles. It's actually amazing how accurate it could be for isolated halos. Okay. That will be here. Uh, if you look at the sub halos we will be here. And uh, 
This is how many particles you need to converge to the same level, about 5%, about 3,000. You multiply by number of particles and so on, uh, you would need to throw out all our results and their results are also in the trouble. So that, that motivates them to do what they call orphans. Uh, we actually don't resolve those objects. When hello is dissolving, it, when it becomes subhello, you assign to next neighbor uh, uh, dark matter particle and you move with that dark matter particle and say, is this my orphan? Okay? Which actually is a numerical defect. You don't resolve those. This is why you need to do tricks. Okay. So this is the convergence in millennium simulations. And of course, they don't pose it as a problem with millennium simulations. They say everybody else has the same problem, which is actually not correct. Okay, this is what we get. So in this case, the simulations uh, will be done by different codes, and also with the same code, but with different resolution. Okay. So now we have a distinct halos, and we have sub halos, which will be here, will be abundance here, will be ratios here. So we have simulations called multi duck big multi duck uh, and a Bolshoi. Bolshoi has the highest resolution. Uh, big multi duck has a two and a half gigaparsec box, which is the 10 times bigger box, and of course, low resolution. And we do the ratio, the same trick was what, uh, what they were doing. Uh, so those here, those, those curves, will be, will be distinct halos in those simulations. You don't see the difference. So in order to see the difference, you actually do the ratio. So now, uh, the, the, that will be the curves for sub halos. You start to see some difference. But actually, the difference is too small. If you look at it here, for all halos, which we will be care about, uh, it's a function of a Vmax, which will be here. Will be difference between, say, multi duck one gigaparsec box over Bolshoi simulation will be here. Okay. We go to uh, compare big multi duck much bigger box with a multi duck which is a smaller box, which will be here, and there again will be a ratio. Okay. And this is the convergence. Okay. So now you look at the, at the ratio here, and you see at what, what, what velocity is we have a convergence is the result. Okay. So now for comparison multi duck simulation, we get convergence 110 kil, uh, uh, kilos per second, corresponding to 120 particles, sub halos and distinct halos. For distinct halos, convergence is better, but you need to have about 150 particles to converge in those simulations. The same is a big multi duck uh, as compared with, uh, with multi duck. Again, you need to have 140 particles, 150 particles to get convergence both for sub halos and distinct halos. Convergence is worse for sub halos, as expected. You see that point here and that point here will be different. But at the same time, it's a lot better. It's about a factor of 20 as compared with, uh, 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 with millennium simulations. So that will be abundance of halos and sub halos. The next one is the correlation function. It's actually more interesting if you look at, at some numbers. Uh, so now let's take this one. We, we cut at the 220 kilos per second. Uh, we compare uh, a multi duck simulation, one gigaparsec with the Bolshoi 250 kiloparsec, different resolution, different mass per, mass per particle. And we do correlation function with this one. Correlation function actually converts remarkably well, all the way up to about five or six megaparsec here. But actually, it's not result of a lack of resolution. If you look at, at, at what's happening here, uh, the blue curve is a, uh, is a multi duck much bigger simulation. So it long, has a longer waves, and longer waves will bring more objects, which, uh, which were absent in a smaller box simulation of, of a Bolshoi. So as a result, correlation function going up. In spite of the fact we have resolution which is a low resolution, with simulation with a low resolution. That's a cosmic variance in a box size. Okay. But again, that convergence uh, uh, on a level of a few percent uh, is uh, for a couple hundred particles. Now, this is a lot better result because now we are moving to bigger volumes. And the bigger volumes don't have that problem uh, with the cosmic variance, not as much. Uh, and now we compare two simulations. And you don't see much of a difference. You go to larger scales here. Okay. Something about 50 megaparsec and above, there's the cosmic variance start to play a role. You see some kind of uh, deviations there. But all the way from uh, 100 kiloparsec all the way to 50 megaparsec, there's no damn difference between them. Okay. Okay. And again, if you start to count how many particles, 150 baht. Okay. So again, there's no need if you do simulations right. Uh, and it's a whole pipeline, not just simply running simulation, it's a whole pipeline picking parameters of those and uh, doing uh, 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 hello finding and afterwards the tracking and everything else which, which takes that. 
uh, and at the end of the day, uh, we have a much better convergence uh, in, in, in those simulations. Anatoly, you are only going to relatively you know, massive system, right? No, 120 particles. You can get less than that. No, like in terms of physical mass of the halos you are talking about. That's uh, something, you know, the Vmax is about 100 and above. Yes, yes. So that's not really a dwarf galaxy, so, uh, you know, that kind of thing we're talking about. Well, it depends on how you treat it. 120 galaxy kilometers per second is a dwarf, is a dwarf oh, yeah, it can yeah. be, okay. whatever it is the name, yeah. But it doesn't. Sure, okay, yeah. so this. So now, one of the effects that actually was, was here at the companion correlation functions, uh, and now looking at uh, the results from different angle. So this is a Millennium simulation. Uh, this is a high resolution Millennium two. This is low resolution Millennium one. You start to see convergence here, and you see some some, some difference here, and you can say what what's, what's happened, what's happened, and they say, look, there's definitely convergence here. The point is that there should not be convergence here. The box size, this is how correlation function for pure analytics, you take power spectrum, can cut it at a box size and say what correlation function will be. And this is this one, correlation function multiplied by power 1.8, just to flatten it out. That's correlation function which you expect for 100 megaparsec box, which is a millennium two. And you compare it with the 500 megaparsec box, which you learn here, at the 20 megaparsec, there should be factor of, 10, uh, factor of two difference in correlation function. There should not be convergence here. The box is too small. So we argued at that moment that actually there might have been a fluke uh, in, uh, in Millennium 2 simulation. And indeed, there was a fluke. So you cannot really do that convergence, but at the same time, if your baseline is, uh, is wrong because it's a fluke, you cannot really judge it uh, as a convergence, so that's kind of flying this way. But uh, the bottom line, uh, 250 megaparsec box, if you look at this one, uh, is actually is not terribly good for some scales. If you go back to, to that correlation function here, okay, you start to see the 10 megaparsec deviations about 20 percent. Uh, so when you start to, con uh, to compare Balshoi simulations correlation function with the Sloan, you shouldn't be expecting good results at 10 megaparsec scale. It should be down by about 20 percent. So don't try to overfit do, do, uh, or, or interpret the result. You can start to compare one gigaparsec box and two and a half gigaparsec box, no problem whatsoever. OK, now, interesting question is, uh, how much time anyway? Uh, yeah, actually, I, I um, <laughs> OK, 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 we keep, keep moving, keep moving. Yeah. OK, now, uh, so now we saw that the convergence is with 150 particles uh, is about 5 10% accuracy. Uh, and uh, how the heck it possibly happen? If you think about it, there's a lot of effects which actually against you. Okay, the noise, the inner part which actually defines Vmax, has about 50 particles, and the 50 particles simply fluctuate, simply short noise. You expect about 20% variation. 20% variation would be way too much because the velocity function is very steep. You have a scatter about 20%. You totally screw it. Okay. We we'll see later on that actually is not true. You're not screwed. Uh, two body scattering. We all take galaxy classes and all this dynamical kind of thing and you know, two body scattering. 150 particles, uh, open cluster dissolves very quickly because of two body scattering. Okay. We we'll see how that will happen. Force resolution and tidal stripping. How those contribute to all the kind of discussion here? Let's start with uh, uh, with two body scattering. Uh, this is a normal Chandrasi car formula, which is, which is here, okay. uh, which we could rewrite in a slightly different way, which is just, just simply rewriting that by defining uh, the crossing time, which is defined by radius divided by velocity dispersion at a maximum of a circle velocity, which will be here. Okay, for Navarro, Frank, and White, you know the answers. The galaxies live in those time scales by a factor of about 20 or 30. We have only 20 or 30 orbits for the whole life of the universe to make. So now, in those units, the relaxation time scale uh, scales in this way that n max is the number of particles, which is about 50 in those low resolution simulations, at two, video uh, at two, uh, at two RSs, uh, 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 the distance of a, of a V max. So you put the numbers here, uh, and you start to scratch your head. 
to uh, the number which you, you, you get in about for Milky Way type objects, 50 particles, is about 20, uh, 20 crossing times. Okay. Uh, at the 20 crossing times, now you run the simulation. Now the simulation is Navarre Frankenwhite isolated ideal case. Okay, you run it. What kind of a scattering we observe it? There also will be two curves here. Uh, that's initial Navarre Frankenwhite. Uh, that's analytical Navarre Frankenwhite. This is how they behave. And after 20, 30 uh, 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 crossing times, which is the relaxation time scale, this is the curve. You don't see much of a difference. Less than a few percent. Okay. If you roll it over a long period of time, you start to see that velocity goes up. That's two body scattering. So one relaxation time scale doesn't change the density profile even a bit, just a few percent. You need to wait significantly longer uh, to see some effect, which is in this case it was a factor of five and six. We don't have that time, those galaxies don't live that long. Uh, that curve it shows how the max changes over time, very long period of time. You clearly see two body scattering going up. Uh, and that's a statistical variance. Uh, let me skip that stuff and keep going this way. Uh, the short noise. The score rate of n, you cannot play with it. Yes, you can, if you think about it. Okay. So now, uh, this is what you naively expect. You naively expect uh, the Poissonian noise. Poissonian noise, if you do the algebra, will be one half of square root of n. Okay. One half is coming in relation between mass and velocity. Another calm, another half is coming from another, another, another source. It's not Poissonian, it's actually sub Poissonian in those scales. The number of objects within given radius for Navarre Franken White fluctuates not as a Poissonian. It's a number of objects which mean even moving in and out. If all orbits will be circular, there will be no fluctuations, period. But they do move, so there is a fluctuations. This is how, fluct how uh, statistics of a Poissonian noise depends on the distance from the center of an object uh, in the units of a core radius. You're going outside of a core radius, the fluctuations actually factor of two smaller than, than Poissonian, that will be the number. So we normalize that. Uh, and we calculate that, that that noise is analytic now, delta V over V, 3.5%. And you go back to simulations, it actually is exactly what you see in simulations. That will be not that curve, that will be that curve. So delta V over V, V max actually fluctuates very little, and a pure sub Poissonian noise is expected from Navarre Franken White. Uh, the fourth resolution. Uh, let me skip that part. You do need to have a force resolution review. Look at the results, the, how people often uh, quote uh, the gadget results. They quote number of particles, a mass resolution. They forget to include the force resolution. It's actually quite significant, depending on where you stand. If you look at the results, how it converges, depending on uh, the force resolution in units of RS, you do converge to Navarre Franken White, which will go in this way. Uh, and uh, the top curve shows the error in V depending on, on the resolution epsilon divided by RS, the epsilon normal for softening. If you go to what resolution we normally should be getting here, the error is, uh, is, uh, is less than 2.5%. If your resolution is lower, it's steeply very going down and you start to see very significant deviations uh, if your resolution was not sufficient. Uh, and uh, yes, I, I, I'm about done. Uh, like another five minutes, please. Uh, 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 so now, uh, that's about tidal slip. And so that object, which is 150 particles within the real radius, goes and became sub halo, gets stripped. How far we could actually track it? You can do actually analytics. We normally solve equations on, uh, numerically, but actually you could do analytics. You do the tidal fre uh, the frequency of an orbit, you equate with the frequency of a perturber, that's one of definition which is actually important for the central part of, of a tidal radius. That will be the solution of that algebraic rela relation here. I will not kind of unroll it here. This is simply algebra. Uh, and this is the approximation of that solution. So now if I look at this one, this is a ratio of concentration of a satellite in the, in the primary, power three and a half. Uh, that factor depends on that xd. Uh, XD is the distance at which the subhalo will be destroyed. So if you strip it and strip it and strip it, at the beginning nothing happens because you strip peripheral part, V max is not affected. In some moment actually it starts to get really, uh, really significant effect. And it's uh, like, a, like a wall. Because uh, when, when, uh, when tidal radius became close to uh, uh, two RS, 
uh, the central part is unbound. You remove that, that, that matter, most of that, of that object will disappear. Not all of it, some will be left, but very, very small fraction. With limited resolution in cosmological simulations, you basically lose it. So that factor here, that xd, is about two, very difficult to get to one. In order to get to one half, you need to uh, have the galaxy simulation. Okay, this could tell you how steep is that. So you put all these numbers, you can track subhalo the distance of about RS of a parent. So if you take a parent of a sizable kind of object like a 10 to 13 solar mass, that's about 50 kiloparsecs. It tells you very difficult to get below that. And this is exactly we start to see deviations between uh, different halo finders. Very difficult actually to get below that limit. And it's a goal again uh, because of uh, the physics of a subhalo. The central part is simply will be unbound. I'm finishing. So now let's summarize the results. Uh, that will be the conditions uh, which we need to run simulations to get convergence of all the, all the statistics. Uh, important statistics will be, uh, will be, will be about here. Uh, uh, Two-body scattering is basically negligible. Uh, and that's a, the reason for that, or the two reasons for that, uh, is uh, uh, because the resolution actually is quite low in the and can white. And it's how it depends on, uh, on, on analytics. You actually could run those simulations for, uh, with, uh, with the 50 particles, and the halo doesn't dissolve. That's both uh, because of a uh, uh, finite lifetime of halos uh, in low resolution simulations. Uh, and uh, this is the one. Uh, so we're basically done. You can read the results. Let me summarize this one. Uh, and body simulations are very easy to screw. <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. That, so that's the conclusion. No questions. Everything's wrong. Oh. No. No, no. No, 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 no. 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 Okay, any other questions? If you know what you're doing, you do it at right. Okay. But you need to know it. So